I grew up with with like just people in our home all the time from, from the rock and roll days, you know, and not really knowing who, who they were, I, you know, when I was a kid, not being able to appreciate that. You know, I mean, he grew up with, with Ron Wood, you know, they were in their first band together, the Birds. Um, and so just growing up around all that, you know, and, and uh, you know, I mean, I think Julian Lennon was over at our home and like, like Mick Taylor, like all these, all these folks, you know, who were just kind of my parents' friends, you know. And then growing up, when I became like a teenager, I kind of really started to realize, wow, these people really were part of rock and roll, you know, and part of such a, such a cool um, part of history. My dad was a bass player, and so I grew up knowing that's what I wanted to do, and I don't think he really took me seriously. And so I would beg Dad, please let me borrow one of your basses, you know, and he had like the, you know, the 60s, he's had his basses since the 60s, you know, always the, the precisions, and and uh, he could never touch them, though. They were his babies. And so he never really took me seriously, never really, uh, you know, let me kind of get into to playing. And then Andy came over one day, and he had a pig nose amp in one, hand and he had a bass in the other hand and dad's like, Andy, so good to see you and you bring me gifts. That's so wonderful. And he's like, well, actually this is for Eva. It's for your daughter, you know, she needs to start playing. So Andy was a bass player too back in the day. So, uh, so he was super supportive and, and got, me, uh, got me playing. Andy had just finished producing Van Halen's live record and uh, they did a version of uh, the Kinks's You Really Got Me on there. And so that was my first, my first bass line that I learned. And then Dad finally was like, okay, I guess she's for real. <laughs> I went to an all-girls school. The option for me then was to play like in the liturgy band or something. And then there were some other girls that had a band. And uh, we just kind of started playing together and, and writing songs. And uh, they were really, really into U2. And I was really, really into Nirvana. So. We kind of made like, all right, we'll do one of your U2 songs, we'll do one of my Nirvana songs. So we did some covers and uh, did a lot of original tunes also, and it was a really fun way for me to start the creative process too. I love the groove, you know, I love the way it feels to just groove with a band. Um, and uh, that was a big part of, of uh, growing up for me, playing, playing music. I started my music schooling in, in high school. I went to a uh, school called LAXA, LA County High School for the Arts. And I was in the um, music program there, and that was for uh, junior and senior year, and I was part of the big band. And uh, and I was, I mean, I was the only female in the rhythm section. It was cool being in a male-dominated thing, and because you stand out, um, but you have to be good, too. You have to be able to, to compete with them, you know? So you have to prove yourself, I think, in some ways that, that guys don't have to. After that, I went to UCLA, but I studied ethnomusicology there, um, which is more of a focus on, on world music and culture. I think that uh, was a great experience for me because I had only had experience up to that time with a Western perspective in music. And uh, studying ethnomusicology and studying how other cultures do it, you know, they have music to celebrate the birth of a child. They have music to celebrate the seasons, um, when it's time to go hunt or gather, um, you know, rites of passage. There's music for everything. And um, it's not about money. It's not about making a, a career out of it. It's about cele celebration, expression. And uh, it was really cool to, to learn that, experience that. It's a different way of seeing it, you know? I'd been playing uh, with the Mars Volta, they had, which had just started as a, as a new band. And we were writing songs and coming up with a set and, and uh, recording an EP. And uh, shortly after I finished school, we went on, I went on tour. And um, it was a really amazing experience because I was no longer in school. I didn't have to worry about homework. All I had to do was just write music and have fun and just play music and, and enjoy life. It was also a really creative time for me too. Like any writer, you're always inspired by, by an, an influence you may not even know you have. You know, other bands or composers or you know, even just the environment in general. You know, sounds of the, sounds of the railroad or you know, the construction worker next door is making some pattern on the hammer or something like that. You know, it's just always, just kind of always hearing little, little things that kind of pop into your head. All the, all the people I've played with have been a really, really cool experience. And I've done 
um, different stuff with all of them. The pink cake's just so wonderful because she's so great and it's a real fam family vibe. I love that she's supportive of women, you know, female musicians. I love that she has, has girls in her band. Um, there's a lot of artists that are threatened by that. You know, they don't want the competition with other females on stage, so they don't they hire an all-male band, you know, which is fine. Um, but I love that she's just supportive of it. It's pretty even as far as on stage, as far as the male to female ratio, you know. Uh, and I think that's, that's really great. That she's confident enough and secure enough to, 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 to not be threatened by that. I think that if, there's, if you're doing an audition or something like that, or playing in a band, it's so important to, to know the material and be prepared. I mean, I've, I've done so many auditions and had experiences like that where people just come in not knowing. They're not gonna get, you know, I mean, maybe they're a great player, but it's important to practice and do what you have to do to be prepared. There's so many things I learned from my dad. In, in music, I guess, one thing I always remember him telling me is that less is more when it comes to playing bass. And I think about that sometimes, because it's easy to kind of get carried away and. You know, everyone in, in you're playing in a band or whatever, everyone wants to do their thing and everyone wants to um, show their stuff. But with the function of, of the bass in particular, it's, it's really important to lay it down. You know, it's like the glue.